Hey everybody, welcome to our next session. A um, couple housekeeping items, you can tweet with the hashtag GGXElevate. Um, be sure to submit your questions. I think you guys have found the ask a question button down here at the bottom. Um, and yes, these recordings will be available later. Um, and without further ado, I'm super excited um, to introduce uh, Julie Maloney. She works with US Digital Services, yes, the government. Um, and she's gonna tell you about the hardest job she's ever loved um, working with USDS. This is a really, really great talk. So welcome, Julie. Thank you so much. Um, so I hope you can all hear me and I am really excited to be here. I love talking about USDS. Um, and every time I do, I am confused because I never thought I'd work in the government. Like, who thinks they're going to work in the government? Certainly not me. But I've ever loved. And it's hard for a lot of reasons that don't have anything to do with technology. They have everything to do with people. Uh, the technology is the easy part. Uh, complex systems are hard. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the types of work that we do, uh, who we do it for, and how we do it. Uh, but the funny thing is, is kind of a spoiler alert, uh, the things that we do and the way that we're successful isn't really unique to USCS. Um, you can all do it in your own organizations. And while I would love for you all to come work at USCS and do it, as a takeaway, I, I just, you know, I'd like you all to think about how you too can use all of your knowledge and expertise and just your entire whole selves uh, to and bring it to your own work because Sometimes it's all we have. Um, if you're looking behind me, this is the fancy digs we have here at Jackson Place, the US Digital Service. I am indeed in a basement. I'm in the fancy room in the basement. Um, and, and so that just gives you a little bit the sense of just uh, how we work. Scrappy is how we work. But the US Digital Service, what are we, right? Crazy. Uh, so we're about three and a half years old, and so that means that we were started uh, in the Obama administration, and we are still here in the current administration. We are a bunch of very passionate nerds uh, who use design and technology to help the government deliver better services to the public. Uh, very specifically, we don't say the American people because we also serve at people who want to become American citizens, uh, and we still do that work today, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that as well. Um, but what are our objectives at the U.S. Digital Service? And one is to transform critical public facing services. That means any time that uh, a citizen or a person wanting to become a citizen interfaces with the government, it's probably digital or should be digital. Uh, those are two very different things. Uh, if it is digital, we try to transform those services into, you know, circa 2010 technology would be really awesome. Uh, 2017, 2018 technology is a, it's just an amazing achievement. And sometimes we get good partners in agencies who, you know, are amenable to that. And that's amazing. But really, we're trying to bring interfaces from the 80s, 90s, sometimes the 70s into the 2000s, 2010s. Um, and that is hard. And it's hard for a lot of reasons. And we'll talk through that in a little bit. We also want to help agencies figure out how to buy better services. That means um, really digging into to what people are trying to do, because they're usually trying to do the right thing and helping them weed through bad contracts, bad requirements, um, bad everything, and trying to get them to a better place where they can buy better services that are maybe modern and don't lock them in. Uh, maybe sometimes uses open source uh, and maybe sometimes uses new things like Agile. And we help them buy better services uh, and save money. And that's a big deal. Um, if we can keep someone from spending $500 million on something that should have been $5 million, we're gonna take that win for us and for you uh, any day of the week. Another thing that we do is making sure that we're expanding the use of common platform, common, common platform services and tools. And that could be tools that we help build, uh, such as login.gov, which is a joint effort between the US Digital Service and um, our partners in the technology transformation uh, organization, uh, 18F. And uh, that is meant to be a government single sign-on solution uh, at a very high level of authentication. We would love to be able to roll that out across, 
across agencies. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to sign in to do your taxes with the same user information that you use, oh, I don't know, to fill out your FAFSA uh, at the Department of Education? And you know, what paths can that bring? Um, but even if it's not a specific tool that we build, it might be a common platform. It might be the use of the cloud. It might be the use of, oh, I don't know, some sort of, any sort of continuous integration and build system. It could be a lot of things, uh, but uh, we, we try to make sure that what we use can be used in other places as well. Because if we don't, we're just as bad as the contractors who lock agencies into one thing. And finally, we want to bring top, top technical talent into public service, and that's, that's all of you um, and your friends who, who are probably too busy working to be here today, you know, get them too. If you are super experienced, uh, especially in complex organizations, if you are very, have a very high emotional intelligence, and if you want to give back in some way, and you never, especially if you never thought you would uh, work in government, Take a look at US Digital Service or 18F and, and see what might fit for you because I can guarantee you and not knowing all 2000 of you or whatever it is watching this today, I can guarantee that we need all of you. Um, I'd be happy for five. We need the help. Who are we helping? That's the fun part, right? So we help as many people as we possibly can. And this is why it gets hard because we can't help we have an agency team at the Department of Homeland Security, uh, and for the last several years, they've been working for immigrants and refugees, making it easier for immigrants and refugees to get in the country, to escape terrible situations in their home country. Um, we work to create tools that help asylum officers uh, adjudicate their cases quicker, which means they can help more refugees come into the country, more asylees come into the country. Uh, we are trying desperately to make the immigration form process better. Uh, generally, in all the situations that I'll explain, what we really do is we try to unfuck the government, and it's really fucked uh, from a technology perspective, right? Um, so we have a team at DHS working hard for immigrants and refugees and working a little bit now with, the, with FEMA to try to make the grant system not suck quite as much as it does, uh, especially for people who have just lost everything in fires and floods. They shouldn't have to go through as much paper as they do. We also help veterans, uh, and this is this is one of one of our favorite stories because there's so much that we owe to to our veterans, and so little that we do well for them from a technology perspective. There are 598 distinct websites where veterans go to get information about how to get the services they've already earned, like healthcare and education. 568, 598 different websites is like. 597 too many, right? Uh, so we've been working with the VA to make all these uh, websites, you know, at least flow through one kind of interface, like a portal, a uh, very cutting edge portal technology uh, at vets.gov uh, and, and trying to make the paper forms not paper anymore. So incrementally taking bad things and making them better and in terms of interfaces. And You'll notice a common theme as we go through here. Uh, military service members, we work for them. Uh, one of the one of our teams at the uh, the Pentagon, the Defense Digital Service, uh, they're working on a better platform that helps veterans, or sorry, helps active duty service members and their families move. Uh, it's the moving process, which hundreds of thousands of families do every year, all at the same time. Um, is a very antiquated uh, computer pro computer uh, system that usually goes down and results in people not being able to move. And so we're making a better one because that sort of cognitive load, you don't want to think about how you're, how you're going to move your family from one end of the country to the other while you're sitting in Afghanistan getting shot at. Like that's the last thing that you should be thinking of. So we try to make sure that you don't have to think of that. We also help students. Um, in 2015, USCS and 18F uh, worked together to create the college scorecard, the new version of the college scorecard, uh, which, which focused on you know, actually listening to students and their families and, and really figuring out what it is that they wanted to see and then making that 
So um, Medicare, Medicaid recipients, we work with the team at, at, uh, at Health and Human Services at the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, and uh, we're working on opening data, uh, basically uh, providing uh, APIs for third parties uh, to access Medicare claim data so that they can so the doctors can, you know, doctors and the other third parties can work with that data and present it to patients in a better way. Um, make sure that they're sort of looking at their trends and how can that help provide better service for 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 seniors and anyone actually. Farmers, uh, this is my personal favorite. Um, there's a there's a process that we went and uh, discovered. We do discovery sprints here at USDS. We get a bunch of people together, like four, five. And we go out for a couple weeks and we learn everything we can about a topic. We interview people, we ask the question, you know, if you had a magic wand, what would you change? And then we come up with a report that says, here are some things that we think we should change. And then if we're lucky, we get to work on enacting better legislation or even building a better technology system. And with farmers, we found that farmers have a really hard time getting workers in to pick the crops. Uh, and this is a food security issue for, for all of us. Uh, if you can't pick the crops, the crops die and they you have to plow them under and, and we have no food. Uh, farmers often have to single-handedly manage hundreds of pounds of paper in order to get their guest workers into the country uh, because there's nobody domestically that wants to do the work and there are five different government agencies that they have to work through to get the work, uh, to get the workers. And farmers need to farm and not do paperwork for five different agencies. So trying to help people figure out how maybe not make that, you know, what farmers have to do. Also, that's a lot of paper. And finally, small business owners. And I say finally only because that's the last icon on the screen, not because that's, you know, the end of the people that we that we help um, or that we are working for. But we have worked with the Small Business Administration to make the application process for certification smoother, uh, much easier, less burdensome. And also for the analysts, the analysts inside the SBA who are adjudicating those cases, again, reducing paper and working through, uh, you know, nice, clean, modern technology with a with a UI that makes sense to just to do their jobs so that small business owners can do their jobs and their families can, you know, survive. So that's a lot of stuff right, right through there. And one of the reasons that I worked uh, really hard there to do that quickly was because if I pause, I cry uh, because this is really hard work and there is literally nobody that we could walk past in the street. Uh, who isn't served by some of the work that we're trying to help our agency partners do. And that can be really emotional. And that is hard uh, to do sometimes. One of the, well, actually the number one reason that we choose projects are, is, is this project the one that's got the greatest impact for the greatest number of people? If it doesn't, then we have to prioritize it a little lower. Um, is the likelihood of success high? If so, awesome. So far, so good. And can we scale it across government? So if it's some really great project that has a high likelihood of success in time, and we can take something from it and teach others across the government uh, or implement technology somewhere else, even better. And that's when we'll, that's when we'll choose that project to do. Whew, that was a lot. How do we do it? And this is, this is where the takeaways come in for you guys because the, the, the values that guide our work you can, you can use these in your own jobs too, uh, because they're very simple and they're not prescriptive. Hire and empower great people. It's as easy as that, right? Super easy. No, it's very, very, very hard. Our talent team works uh, tremendously hard to recruit and, and, and find the right type of people. And type, it doesn't mean the most super senior person in the world. It doesn't, it, I mean, you tend to be senior, but it also, means someone with a really, really amazing upside and high EQ and a high ability to get shit done um, in a mission-driven and complex environment. So if we hire you, you're automatically empowered to go do whatever needs to get done. And we're going to do our level best to support you. And that 
in that in that process. Uh, find the truth and tell the truth. This is my favorite value. Um, we don't pull any punches. If something is messed up in the government, we will tell the cabinet secretary in charge of it that your thing is messed up. Uh, we will probably use fancier words and be a lot more technically detailed than that. But generally, we need to find the truth and tell the truth because we don't have time not to. Similarly, optimize for results and not optics. Um, we don't have stakeholders, or I mean shareholders, except for you know everybody that pays taxes. So, you know, we don't need to make fancy presentations to the board of directors or whatever. We just need to show our results. And if we're showing results, um, that is the biggest optic that could possibly be. Um, let the results speak for themselves. And the minute we do something because, I don't know, someone on the Hill wants us to, it would look good, whatever the case may be, the president thinks it's cool, then we've lost our reason to be here. We are here for results. Um, and whatever that means, sometimes the results are not good ones. Sometimes we fail, we learn from them and move on. Sometimes we succeed and sometimes we learn about a lot more stuff that needs fixing. And sometimes we have to go where the work is because sometimes that stuff that needs fixing is in Afghanistan. And sometimes it's in like Southern Illinois and sometimes it's in Lord knows where. Um, but especially when we work with um, military families, uh, those military families are stationed at bases in remote places. Um, the people that are doing the work supporting our deployed troops are in, in, you know, Afghanistan or other remote areas. And we have to go there to work with them to figure out what it is we're designing uh, because we're designing it for them and we're not going to make it up just because it's scary to go to Afghanistan. Great momentum. Um, we do everything with passion. I mean, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. So says Ralph Waldo Emerson and so say us um, and so say we all, right? Um, if we're not making momentum in our projects, if we're not helping our agency partners move forward, we're not doing a good job. And finally, designing with users and not for them. Users are at the core of everything that we do. Um, we have to work with them and not make things up. And um, the minute we stop designing for our users, just like the minute you stop designing for your users, the minute you've lost the reason for making your product. So, all of that having been said, hmm, join us please. And, uh, you know, any questions, I'm happy to take them here, offline, online, on the internets, whatever you want. I'm here for you. Great. Julie, I agree that going along, but people are so inspired and a lot of thank yous were in there too for doing this work and sort of a, an empathy for how hard it is. Um, so most of the questions that we got, we just have a few minutes, so I want to kind of paraphrase. Sure. Sorry, I went um, long. My fault. Totally no, my fault. I, the questions are like so much less than just listening to you. It was so awesome. Um, so, um, so everyone knows if you click this, um, thanks to our sponsors, um, you can learn more about jobs at U.S. Digital Service. Um, they have um, on that page, you'll find a list of the types of roles that they're looking for. But I did want to ask you, Julie, there were a question around, you know, what special skills are there part time things available? So maybe if we could do that one. Sure, um, we'll do part time first. Uh, the answer is no. Um, and also, we don't even do remote. Uh, so because it is very, very difficult to work on the ground with users who are in DC when you're not in DC. However, I will say, if you uh, really want to work uh, in a modern digital services type of environment and give back to the government and you cannot move, um, do look into our friends at 18F. They allow remote work. Um, no, it, it, so in terms of skills, if you are an engineer of any flavor, um, please join us. Um, if you are a backend engineer, a security engineer, uh, an SRE, a front end engineer, uh, we work a lot with React. Um, join us. If you are a product manager with technical chops, um, you've led and deployed technical products with a team, join us. If you are a UX designer or researcher of any flavor of UX, because UX contains multitudes, join us. Well, that, should, that should cover all of you. <laughs> Well, I think that, that you probably inspired a lot of people to think about this in a way that they never would have. So thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. And also remember, you can do all of those things in your own company. You don't just have to join USGS, but again, <laughs> plug for that. But now but I really, want to come work with you. <laughs> you can all come work with us. There's only okay. 175 of us. 
like 175 is not enough to do all the work that we have to do. All right. Thanks again, Julie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.